Hi, I'm James, and in this video I'm taking a look at stripping down a Dell XPS 17. This is the L702X model, and I am using as a reference for this the service manual uh, available on the De Dell website, which I will link in the description below this. Um, we are having a look at this machine as it's been suffering some overheating issues. Um, so we are going to take a look, remove the heatsink, repaste the um, the processor and see if we can improve the temperature of this machine given that it's had a good few years of hard use and is beginning to have some issues along those lines. So we start, first of all we need to remove the rear cover to the machine. Single screw here and then if we just slide our pry tool around and that pops out there. It's been removed a couple of times on this particular laptop, so uh, not too much of an issue. Uh, the hard drive, actually hard drive one in here, it should have some additional screws holding it in, but as we've been testing a few things on it, they're removed at the moment. I would recommend that you label your hard drives as well. This model has two drives, um, so label them just so that you don't mix them up when you're putting it back together. Um, so the first drive I simply need to slide out. The second drive uses the same bracket system as the first one should have fitted. So we have four screws, one on each corner holding down the metal assembly that the drive sits in. So by going through and removing these, Slide the drive and lift it out of position. And if we just gather up screws for that. And I'm not sure this is essential, but we need to, well, we will remove the memory modules and put those to one side. This particular model, because it has the GT550, not the 55, oh sorry, the 555 uh, only has two DIMM slots, other models have four DIMM slots, um, but this one only has the two. This screw here, by undoing that and lifting that out, we should now be able to release the optical drive. And again, we'll just Next up, and we need to remove the palm rest, so we have these three screws. And these are underneath where the optical drive was, just in the one edge. Now if we turn the laptop over, open it, so by pushing up on this tab in here, which is a right pain because we can't see it, this will begin to lift the bezel and then we can slide our pry tool in and bring that around hopefully. So by running the pry tool up along the edges here, we can begin to lift out the bezel. So there, that releases the bezel. We then have two cables in here, which we flip up the connectors and remove the ribbon cables as so. Now this appears slightly different to the instructions. Um, let us take a quick look. So this, unlike the 701, appears not to be retained by any screws. It just lifts up as so. And then again we just need to 
release the ribbon cable to remove that quickly and place that to one side. Now next we have one of the more awkward bits. We do actually have to remove the display assembly on this laptop. So to do this we first of all need to disconnect the two wireless antennas as so and if we unfeed those from there So if we free that cable, disconnect the internal connector there for the screen, we also need to remove this single screw here. Which presumably acts for earthing to the chassis. That's a retained screw. And then we just have four hinges here for the screen mechanism. For the hinge mechanism, sorry. So by undoing these, side. We'll need to support the screen in a moment as obviously with the hinges loosened off. It's possible there are some other screws as well here. this over we need to remove these two screws here as well. These are longer than the ones for the hinge. If we flip this back over then we should and easy as that, we now have the display removed from the laptop. Now this particular model doesn't have the Bluetooth card which sits down here. We don't have uh, any of the sort of 3G connectivity or cell phone comm stuff. But what we do need to remove is the wireless card. that. Now we need to flip the laptop over to remove the top cover. This involves removing all the remaining screws from the back of the laptop here. Four long screws and two short which sit under the battery area. One, two, three screws there. Always helps if you remove all of the screws. And a 
fourth here. Then again, we flip it back over and we have 10 retaining screws on the inside here. All these ones on the inside appear to be identical lengths. They're all also clearly marked, which is very handy on the chassis. We can see it tells us the size of screw type and where they are required. This one here looks like we may need to just release that plug as well. Rather than pulling at the plug, I should probably leave it out. There we go. It's just obviously connected between the chassis and the board there. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So with that done, we now have access to the main board. And from here we can strip off the coolers, get everything cleaned up, and see what the cause of the overheating in this machine was. So to remove the coolers we have one, two, three, four screws over the main processor heatsink and two holding down the graphics card cooler. We'll do these diagonally. that we can now lift the heatsink assembly off and as we can see with that there is a lot of dust in there which is going to be blocking a lot of airflow through the heatsink and is the likely cause of the overheating on this. We can also see the thermal paste application on this is not amazing so we're going to clean that up with some contact cleaner, get some fresh thermal paste on there and get the laptop reassembled to see if it's performing any better and a bit more stably. I hope you found this video useful, um, please check out the other content on our channel as well, we look inside various other laptops, uh, disassembling different things and also running performance tests, and if you like what we do, subscribe to see more. Thanks for watching.